Okay, so in this video, we're going to do an RLC example problem, but we're going to be doing a parallel circuit one. So obviously an RLC circuit is one that consists of a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. So let's go with our voltage source, our resistor, our inductor, and our capacitor, and then we join them up in parallel. So let's go with 10 volts, 1 kilohertz, keep it nice and simple. Let's go over 1 kilo ohm resistor. Do 100 millihenries inductor, and we'll do a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So we've got R, L, B. Okay, so for us to analyze this circuit, we'll, if we want to get the total current, we're going to have to find the current in each branch first of all, right? Now, since all of the voltages across each branch are exactly the same, we just need to get the reactance values, and then from there, we can calculate the current in each branch using, for example, IR would be equal to voltage over the impedance. IL is going to be voltage over JXL. And IC is going to be voltage over minus JXC. So let's do the current through the resistor first since that's the easiest. So we have IR is equal to V over R. Just going to do it in a different color. And so the voltage is 10 volts and we've got a phase shift of zero degrees and then we're dividing that by 1k and again we've got a phase shift of zero degrees so that's going to be 10 milliamps at a phase shift of zero degrees let's do il now so io is the voltage over jxl and so that's going to be 10 volts at a phase shift of zero degrees divided by and we're going to have two pi times 1k times 0.1 and then that's also at an angle of 90 degrees because the inductor is obviously phase shifted 90 degrees okay so let's use our calculator so we'll put 10 at the, at the top and then we'll put 2 pi times 1000 times 0 0.1 and that gives us 15.9 milliamps We've got 15.9 milliamps. And then for the phase shift, we're going to do it's since we're doing zero divided by zero degrees divided by 90 degrees, we're just going to do it's zero degrees minus 90 degrees. And so that gives us a phase shift of minus 90 degrees. Okay, let's do the capacitor now. So we've got IC is equal to the voltage over minus JXC. And so that's going to be 10 volts at a phase shift of zero degrees, all of this divided by, and then this is where it gets a bit complicated because, because minus JXC is one over two pi FC. So let's, let's do that. Let's do two pi and then times a thousand and then times, what is it? What's the uh, capacitor? 0 0.1 microfarads so you've got 0 0.1234561 and then we've also got the phase shift of minus 90 degrees because it's a capacitor okay so let's first i'm going to first work out this the bottom denominator and replace that let's do one over two pi times a thousand times 0 0.1234561. Okay, so that gives us 1592, let's say. So I'll just replace all of this with 1592. And then I can put back in my phase shift of minus 90 degrees. So now I can ju then just do 10 divided by 1592. And so that gives me uh, amperage of 6.28 milliamps and then a phase shift so this is where you need to be careful so for the phase shift you've got zero degrees minus minus 90 degrees so that's obviously plus 90 degrees right okay so we've got our current through our resistor current through the inductor and current through the capacitor all right so i total is equal to IR plus IL plus IC. 
So we're going to need to add these complex numbers together. And if we're going to add complex numbers, then we want them in rectangular form because adding in polar form is going to be messy. So let's convert these three polar forms into rectangular forms. Okay, so I've got our three values here in polar form. So if we're converting 10 milliamps at a phase shift of zero degrees to rectangular form, then the magnitude here is 10, right? And since it has no phase shift, then it's got a J complex portion of zero. So it's 10 in terms of magnitude, and then the J is plus J zero. So because we've got minus 90 degrees here, we know that this whole magnitude here is fully down the Y scale somewhere down here, right? So it's purely imaginary. So we have zero in terms of the real part, and then we've got minus J 15.96. And the same for here with the capacitor, it's gonna be fully up on the Y scale. So we're gonna have zero in terms of the real part, and then we're gonna have plus J 6.28. And that's it, we've converted back to rectangular form. Okay, so adding these together is fairly straightforward. You're just gonna do 10 plus zero plus zero, which is obviously 10 in terms of the real parts. And then the imaginary parts, you've got zero. So you've got zero, and then you've got minus 15.96 plus 6.28. Let's use a calculator. So I don't need to put the zero in here, but I just will just for the sake of it. Zero minus 15.96 plus 6.28. Two, eight. And so that gives us uh, minus J 9.68. And so there we have it. Our total current in rectangular form is 10 minus J 9.68 milliamps. Now, in case you're struggling to see like what these mean, I'll just briefly mention in terms of when you have your real axis, right? And you have your imaginary axis here. What this means is that in terms of this resistor here, it exists somewhere like here on the scale of the real. It's purely real with no imaginary. In terms of the inductor, it doesn't exist in, on the real axis. It's purely imaginary and it's at minus 15.96. So it's gonna be somewhere down here. And then for the capacitor, it's plus 6.28 with no real portion. So it's gonna be somewhere here. So the resistor exists somewhere here. The inductor exists somewhere here and the capacitor exists somewhere here. That's the way that you can think about that. All right, so we've got our total current now, and it's in rectangular form. Let's convert it back to polar form so we have a better understanding of what it really means. And if you watch my introductory video on RLC circuits, hopefully you heard me say that you need to be fairly comfortable with complex numbers, and this is what I mean. You're constantly converting backwards and forwards. So the conversion back is quite simple. You're just gonna do the square root of 10 squared plus 9.68 squared and that's going to give you the magnitude part and then the phase angle is going to be from tan to the minus one and then you're going to do minus 9.68 over 10 and that's going to give you the phase angle the reason why i've done a minus up here is because it's minus j here and there's no need to do the minus part here because when you're doing the square root and you're squaring stuff minus two squared and two squared are, are both positive so all right so let's get our calculator so you do the square root of 10 squared plus 9.68 squared and that gives you 13.91 well, let's go 92 92 milliamps and it's going to be at a phase angle of 10 to the minus one minus 9.68 over 10 and so you've got a phase shift of minus 44 degrees so our total current is either 10 minus j 9.68 milliamps or a much better way of understanding it is 13.92 milliamps with a phase shift of minus 44 degrees so we've finished analyzing this circuit but to give you a little bit more of an understanding of what's going on here the total current is lagging the voltage by 44 degrees. So you could describe this circuit as being or behaving inductively. So let's just finish round off with our 
phasor diagram you've got a reference voltage here of 10 volts and we would draw our current at an angle of 44 degrees and it's lagging because it's minus 44 if it was plus 44 we draw it up here so it's at a 44 degree angle and i is 13.92 milliamps and that's it we've fully analyzed this circuit all right guys thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video and it, you found it helpful leave a like i'd appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one peace